a Mumbai street toasty, pork katsu sando, kimchi grilled cheese sandwich, Xi'an spicy beef burgers, and my personal favorite, spicy meatball banh mi. Okay guys, let's make sandwiches. What happens when you take mashed potatoes, spices, cheese, and beautifully toasted bread? Well, you get this famous Mumbai street food snack. This is my version of a Mumbai street toasty. So when someone said to me that there is a toasted sandwich in the world that exists that contains mashed potato plus cheese plus spices, I was like, yes, that is my kind of sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> now, before we get to the sandwich part, let's make our green chutney. So this is a very classic Indian green chutney. You wanna start off with a whole bunch of mint leaves, coriander, some garlic, chaat masala, salt, green chilies, and some lemon juice. Now pop that on your blender and then press start. And then this might happen where it doesn't actually blend. So just add two tablespoons of water and try again. And then you should get a really smooth, lovely puree. And that, my friends, is your green chutney. Let's get on to the spicy potato part. So first of all, I want to create a little um, kind of blend of spices and curry leaves and yummy things here. So I need a little bit of oil, first of all. Some mustard seeds. Just heat those until you start to hear them kind of sizzle and pop. Then you can go in with some cumin seeds and some curry leaves. Now to that, I just need some turmeric and some red chili powder. Now that is such a lovely color already. Oh, and it smells so beautiful. So much more exciting than your regular grilled cheese sandwich. <laughs> okay, so now let's get the potato. And I think this is really cool because you can use like leftover mashed potato from the night before. Great way to use up leftovers. Now add in your spiced oil. A little bit of salt and pepper here. Just mix that till it's all well incorporated. Okay, now take yourself some bread. And this is like not the time for, you know, like fancy sourdough. Just want like a nice fluffy white loaf. Mm, I love the smell of fresh bread, fresh white bread, yum. Okay, I'm getting excited already. <laughs> now, butter your slices here and you know, please go right to the edges. Good toasted sandwich is all about the details. Now lay on that potato nice and thick. It is after all the star of our show here. And then a few little vegetables here because I mean, we're going all carby and cheesy, so we may as well feel a little bit more virtuous with our ingredients. Um, but anyway, they taste good and fresh. So tomatoes, capsicum, onion, and of course the cheese. I'm using like a Swiss cheese here, but you could go in with a cheddar or whatever you prefer. Now my chutney, spread that out on your remaining half. This adds such a lovely pop of fresh herbs and a little bit of heat from the green chili. So nice. Sandwich that on top. And then let's get these sizzling. Cheese is starting to ooze. That tells me that we are ready to go. I'm getting very excited about this sandwich. Oh, look at that color. I mean, oh, it's just perfection. All right, so this is looking amazing. I mean, oh, moment of truth, here we go. Let's have a look. Oh, I mean, that is literally like the perfect cross section of a toasted sandwich. Oh, it's oozing. It looks so delicious. Oh, yum. Okay, pop this out on a plate. You definitely want more of your green chutney that you can like dip your sandwich into. Let's go, shall we? Let's find out if I've done a good job. Hmm. Oh my goodness. Literally, I mean, I just don't think it just can't, it can't get better than that. The cheese, the potato, the spices, oh, that is just pure genius. Absolute genius. Oh. So heaven. Mm. Yum. Cr 
crispy crumbed pork cutlets sandwiched with a Japanese barbecue sauce and fluffy white bread. This is the ultimate pork sandwich. It's Katsu Sando. Okay, so I am all about crispy, crunchy things in sandwiches. What could be better? Uh, so we are gonna do a crumbed pork version today and in a very Japanese style. So the first thing we're gonna do though is just this little tiny trick that's going to keep your pork really moist and that is to dry brine it. So I'm gonna sprinkle my pork and what I've got here is just some pork loin cutlets. They're around about one centimeter, one and a half centimeters thick. So um, they're quite thin. We're gonna do a double pork sandwich. So I'm gonna double these guys up. So I don't want them too thick. Uh, now, dry salting or dry brining. So I'm gonna sprinkle these very liberally with some salt. And you would have heard of wet brining. So this is a similar thing, but a little quicker. Uh, and we're just gonna do it with the dry salt. So I'm gonna turn these over and make sure we get salt on all sides. And then what I want you to do is be a little bit patient and leave these guys for at least 15 minutes, 15 or 20 minutes, and come back and I'll show you how our pork is transformed. Okay, so if we have a look, you can see the salt has dissolved, uh, which means we've gone some way to getting a little bit of that saline water into our pork, keeping them juicy and keeping them perfectly seasoned. Okay, so that is our first step for getting the ultimate fried pork cutlet. The second part is we're gonna do our crumbing. So I have a regular crumbing station set up here, flour, I want some eggs, just give those a whisk. Now, I prefer the dry hand, wet hand uh, situation when I'm crumbing. That keeps my fingers a little bit cleaner than they would if I just went in there with both hands. So grab my pork with my wet hand and then use my dry hand to get the flour spread out all over. Okay, shake off the excess into my egg and then your wet hand comes along and douses everything in the egg. Okay. Allow that to drip off. And then into your panko breadcrumbs. So these are Japanese style breadcrumbs. I love them. They're really nice and light and crispy and fluffy. And you can find them in the Asian section of most supermarkets these days. Okay, and there we go. There's one of our pork cutlets done. Now onto the rest. Okay, now I've got some hot oil around about sort of a centimeter deep uh, in my pan. Just gonna get my pork cutlets straight in there. Now, I just want a gentle sizzle here. I don't want to be too harsh because I want a really beautiful, even golden color. Uh, and I want to make sure the pork cooks through as well. Now, after just a minute or so, I'm going to flip these guys over. They're not quite ready on that first side, but what I want to do is keep flipping them over from time to time to make sure that we're getting that even golden color. If I just let them sit in the one spot in the pan, you tend to get kind of little brown hot spots on your cutlets. Okay, and again, cooking them over. So once you have a beautiful golden brown, even color, just take them out and drain them on paper towel. And as with anything that comes out of the hot oil, I like to season with a bit more salt, not too much because they are beautifully seasoned inside our little pork cutlets. And so now we come to the sandwich part. Now I'm really lucky because here in Bangkok, I live right near a Japanese bakery. So I can find this beautiful, thick, fluffy Japanese style bread. If you've got a Japanese supermarket nearby, head there and see if they've got some beautiful bread. Um, otherwise just go for a really thick cut white toast size bread. Okay, so put that down. And I just want a little bit of butter, edge to edge. Very particular about my sandwich construction. And now here is one essential condiment to this dish, and that is Japanese tonkatsu sauce. And it's basically like, to me, a Japanese version of barbecue sauce. That's what it tastes like. And it has the most amazing, sweet, tangy flavor. You can find it in a lot of uh, major supermarkets now in the Asian section or from your Japanese grocer. And I want a very liberal dousing of that bread. Okay, now just spread that out. And what should happen here is the bread and some of the crumbing on the pork cutlets will soak up some of this sauce and get really nice and tasty. Now I like to add a little bit of shaved cabbage just on the bottom. And now time for our pork cutlets. So one piece on there. And then this is totally not traditional katsu sando, but I am going to add a double layer of the pork today, just because I can. I'm gonna put a little bit more sauce on top of that first cutlet, 
add my second cutlet. So over the top, I love it. Okay, and then I want to finish off with another slice of bread. Let's put some butter on there and we need more sauce. And now because traditionally a Japanese katsu sando would be a little bit squished, doesn't sound great, but that's kind of the word. Uh, but what we want to do is put a tray on top here. I've got a couple of bowls on to weight it down and we're just sort of pushing down a little bit. I just want to leave this for a few minutes so that the bread, the pork cutlets, the sauce, everything pushes together into a firm block. And now here we are guys at the beautiful moment of truth. I'm going to take that off. Okay, lift up our sandwich. And I'm gonna cut the crusts off on the sides. Now, don't worry about those bits. I will be sure to taste test them once we've done filming. That's a very nice cook's treat. So now we have a nice, neat rectangle, the perfect restaurant style shape for our sando. And I'm just gonna cut this into thirds. And let's have a look. Ah, oh, I love it. Beautiful, crispy pork, barbecue sauce. Okay, so just wedge my knife under there and serve that up. And I've just got a little dollop of hot mustard there. I like to kind of spread that on or dip my sandwich in that as I'm eating it. And then I want a little bit of cabbage on the side there. And there we have it guys, a totally ultimate crispy pork sandwich, that restaurant style Japanese katsu sando. And I'm gonna have to taste test obviously because you know, too tasty not to. Mm. Something about the way the sandwich is constructed, the sauce, the crispy pork, even the crunchy cabbage, it is all just perfect. Okay, so we need a moment here. Check out that cheese, oh my goodness. And then we're going in with like spicy stuff and mayo and like so many things. <laughs> this is my ultimate kimchi grilled cheese. Now finally, my camera guy can stop listening to my stomach rumbling. <laughs> All right, so a grilled cheese, or if you're in Australia, a toasty is what we would call it, but it is like serious business in my household. <laughs> I take cheese and bread very seriously. We're gonna get going on the mayonnaise spread first of all. So, I want you to start off with some mayonnaise. I like to use the Japanese Kewpie mayonnaise. It's like tangy, and has all the things, but you know, your favorite mayonnaise is all good as well. And yes, while we're here, so I have recently, in the last few years, been a convert to the mayonnaise instead of butter. I know, the one time that I wouldn't advocate a huge amount of butter. I really do love the way the mayonnaise like caramelizes on the outside of the bread, so yes. Um, you could do butter if you want to, but give this a try. I'm gonna doctor the mayonnaise up a little bit though with some Korean gochujang chili paste, because that's gonna give us a nice color and also like a depth of like spicy flavor. But you only want a little bit, so just a little dash there. And then some sesame seeds as well, which adds a nice little kind of pretty pop of sesame seeds <laughs> to the outside of the bread. We're all about making the bread special. Okay, give that a mix. And now we're going to talk seriously about the cheese. The cheese is so important. Uh, look, I like to go in with a mixture. So I've chosen two. This is probably like my, my ultimate mixture. So I like to do a French Gruyere, like an aged Comte or um, a French aged Gruyere kind of cheese. It kind of has like this um, like nutty, like funky nuttiness, um, which is really great. And then I also like to go in with an Edam. This is like a, um, a Dutch style cheese. It melts really well, um, but a cheddar would be fine here as well. So grab a hold of your cheese. Now I like to mix my cheese with some fresh herbs here really adds a bit of like pop and interest to the sandwich. I'm gonna go in with spring onion and coriander, but you could um, do whatever mix you like. Thai basil is really great as well. And 
And here's a little surprise extra, but I'm kind of taking that cheese fondue kind of vibe, you know, where you're usually adding a little splash of garlic. So I'm doing that here as well. I'm gonna add some finely grated garlic, just like half a clove. I just want like a little kind of hint of the garlic. All right, now mix all of that together and you really wanna make sure that garlic gets right through that cheese. All right, onto the bread. So I'm using like a white kind of loaf here and like sort of, I don't know, a couple of centimeters thick. This breadcrumb is quite soft, so it's not too kind of toothsome, if you know what I mean. Now you want a good dollop of that mayonnaise on each of those. And now here's the thing, so I can't stand unevenly buttered or mayonnaised bread. Um, get right to the corners. <laughs> That's going to give us the perfect layer. Okay, that is looking good. I mean, when you're going to make, you know, a good cheese, make it, make it nice. <laughs> Okay, now flip those guys over because that mayonnaise is going on the outside of the sandwich, obviously. We wanted that heat and the mayonnaise and everything to get all luscious and amazing. Uh, let's get on with the filling though. I like a layer of cheese on the bottom. Now in with the kimchi. So I am using my homemade kimchi that I made a few weeks ago. I actually have a video on how to do that if you guys are interested, but obviously store-bought kimchi is fine as well. Oh, I love like that mix of the funky kimchi and that cheesy cheese and the herbs and all the things. Oh my goodness, I'm so excited already. <laughs> Now, another layer of cheese on top. So this is really key, I think. You need cheese on the bottom, cheese on the top that kind of um, shields the bread from getting too soggy with the kimchi juices. There's always method to the madness, my friends, and construction is very important when it comes to sandwiches. And, and then pop the lid on. And at this point, you're probably thinking, wow, that's like one really huge tall sandwich. It will kind of melt down as we cook it, so. Don't worry, just have some trust. Okay, so let's talk about how we're gonna cook these guys, because obviously they're quite big, so we need like a balance of gentle heat um, and also getting that cheese melted. So what I like to do is start off with a cold pan. I have a cast iron kind of pan here, which is great, but any frying pan is fine. Just make sure it's not uh, hot, and then pop your sandwiches on there. The whole idea with the cold pan is that uh, we give the sandwich is some time to get some gentle heat and cheese melting before the outside gets too brown. So now turn the heat on and just watch it because that gochujang and that mayonnaise uh, can burn really easily. So just wait until it's bubbling and then have a look. So once you've got that beautiful sizzling happening, you want to just flip your guys over. Just let this go on the second side for another minute. Now at this point we have some pretty awesome cheese melting happening on the sides. I have a lovely colour on the top, just kind of push down on here and you can see we've lost a lot of that volume so we're looking like a good sandwich kind of height now. I want to get this into the oven now because I want to make sure that that cheese is all the way melty all the way through without browning everything too much. So into the oven, a couple of minutes. Look at these guys, oh my goodness, I am currently dying right now, oh, I need to get in here. Okay, let's grab a hold of one of these beauties. And here is the moment. <laughs> wow, look at that cheese, oh my goodness. Just, I'm literally dying. Um, <laughs> pop this out onto a plate. Oh, 
Wow, towers of glory right there. Oh my goodness, I need to get in here right now. <laughs> Look at that. Look at that cheese. Mm, mm. Holy smokes, that is so good. You know what's really great? You get uh, the funky kimchi sandwiched by that creamy, melty cheese, and that little hint of garlic, and the fresh herbs, all of it. Just, oh my god, this cheese is out of control. So good. And then the outside, because we've used that mayonnaise, like, you don't even taste that it's mayonnaise, you just kind of get this like toasty, slightly spicy kind of effect on the bread. Mm. Spicy, sizzling beef patties spiked with cumin seeds and Sichuan peppercorns. And you won't even believe the amount of flavor in that sauce. And then the little bread parcel. Ah, oh, this whole thing is just unbelievably good. This is my very non-traditional version of a meat-filled bread parcel or a meat sandwich if you like from Xi'an province in China. Now the main flavors here that I'm taking inspiration from, the spices. So cumin and Sichuan peppercorns, let's get going on those first. I want to toast these to really bring out the best flavor. And you want quite a lot of cumin seeds, more than you would think and some Sichuan peppercorns. Now just heat these until you can see little tendrils of smoke coming up off those spices and you'll be able to smell how beautiful they are. Okay, these are looking good. I'm gonna get them into my mortar and then grind this to a sort of medium powder. I don't mind having little chunks of cumin seeds in there. I just wanna make sure the Sichuan peppercorns are very finely ground. And to that, I want to add a very healthy teaspoon here of chili powder. I really want a good kick of chili spice in these as well. So that's our spice mix done. Let's get on to the burger patty part. Now I'm using some beef and I'm going to cut that with a little bit of pork mince for some extra fattiness. And then you want to put in all but about two teaspoons of this spice mixture. Now I don't want to work this meat too much or too heavily. Uh, I want it to stay nice and loose and crumbly when it's in its little bread parcel. So first of all, I just want to make sure that I'm getting the spices and those two meats mixed together. And I'm just doing that loosely with a fork. And notice I'm not seasoning this with any salt either because the salt inside a burger patty can tend to make it a little tough. I prefer to season on the outside. And now I want to form this into patties just by kind of pushing and pressing gently and not mixing or working that meat too much. Okay, so you can see just how loose that patty is. It's almost threatening to fall apart. That's just what we want. So next we're going to make a garlic yogurt sauce. Now I've got some thick Greek yogurt here. To that I'm going to add some grated garlic. And then a healthy dose of finely sliced coriander. And the rest of that beautiful spice mix we made earlier. Now look at that. tangy, garlicky, those spices, that is ah, amazing, yum. All right, we're nearly there. Let's take a look at the bread that we're using. So in this particular area of China, they make really beautiful wheat flour buns for this kind of dish. Now I found these little pita bread 
pockets at my supermarket and these are going to do just fine at a pinch so I don't have to make my own. But what we won't take a shortcut with is heating these guys up. I want to get them into a pan and get them nice and soft and pliable and just a little bit charry on the outside. Now while we're waiting for those buns, I'm going to salt our little patties here. So a generous sprinkling. A lot of the salt sort of comes off the outside of it. It looks like a lot, but it's not. It's gonna create a beautiful crust on the outside. Now when I've got a beautiful charry color on both sides, I'm just gonna take them out and split them through the middle. Don't cut them all the way through. I like to leave a little bit just at the end there to hold everything together. Now just pop a clean tea towel over those, keep them nice and toasty while we cook our beef. I've got a hot grill plate here, I'm gonna add some oil. Just brush that so I've got an even coating. And on go my burger patties. Now you want to season this second side with some salt as well. Now these are quite thin so they don't take too long. All I want is some beautiful blistering colour on the outside and a few minutes to cook them through on the inside. So these are looking good and they're smelling amazing as well. Oh, that Szechuan peppercorn and cinnamon aroma is just out of this world good. Now just on that same grill plate or in the same pan, add a little bit more oil and then time to get in some onions. Add a little salt to help them caramelize and soften up. And I want some capsicum as well. So now these vegetables are looking beautifully sweet and soft. I'm going to add some spring onion. Just toss that through. And now it's time to build our sandwich. Take one of my buns. I want a very generous helping of that beautiful spicy yogurt. One of my burger patties. of those onions and capsicum. So there you go, if you're looking for a burger alternative, something that is full of spicy goodness, well, this is the dish for you. Let's have a look. Mm. So good. That beef has the most amazing texture. It's really soft and that cumin flavor right through that sandwich. Mm. And then the sour yogurt. Anytime I'm doing burgers, I'm definitely doing these. Yum, so perfect. Wow, this is one loaded sandwich, guys. Check out that spicy meatball. How do you make the perfect banh mi? Well, I'm gonna show you how. This is my version of spicy meatball banh mi.
So one of the defining characteristics for me for a really great banh mi is the pickled vegetables. So the carrot that has that sweet tangy flavour and it just sets everything off. So we're going to start there and make our own very quick pickled carrot. So I just need to slice this into some beautiful little strands. Now one carrot is going to make way too much pickle than you need for this recipe, but that's totally not a problem. You can keep this for up to two weeks, put it in salads, put it in other sandwiches. Really handy thing to have in your fridge. Now I like to add some red chili in here as well. I'm using a mild chili, so this is going to add almost more of a capsicum flavour than a lot of heat. And then all we need to finish this off is some sugar and some white vinegar. Just give that a good mix. And by the time we've got everything else done, these will be beautifully pickled. So now for the porky meatball part. This is not a super traditional Vietnamese meatball. It's a little bit of a riff, my own little take on it. And I'm gonna make it spicy. So I'm using some of my coconut sriracha for this one. I love it because it's not only spicy, but it's tangy, it's got a little bit of sweetness as well. Whatever kind of Asian hot sauce you love to use at home, you can also use for this. Now you guys know me by now and I love things spicy. You can obviously tone it down a little for your tastes as well. And to that I want some sugar, some fish sauce, and a dash of salt as well. I really want these meatballs to be highly seasoned and really fragrant. They're gonna carry through that flavor right through the sandwich. And a little bit of white pepper as well. And now for all the herby bits and pieces, I've got some coriander here. spring onion as well. Now whenever I want a really fine slice of my spring onion I always thin them out a little at the ends here. And I want some lemongrass as well. Didn't I tell you guys these would be packed with flavour? Okay just bruise the outside there with the back of your knife and then cut that end off and I find that this outer part of the spring onion can be quite tough. You don't want to be eating that. So pull that off, trim off the end, and make sure you get a really fine chop here. Now lemongrass freezes really well. So if you don't have it handy at your local regular supermarket, head to your Asian grocer, grab a bunch, keep it in the freezer. And then finally some garlic as well. Now there's only one way to mix meatballs in my opinion and that is with your fingers. Now what you want to do is mix this very vigorously. It's going to work those proteins so we can firm up the meatball a little bit. It's a very Asian style way of doing things. And then just like my mum does whenever she's making her Thai pork meatballs, you need to show the mixture a little bit of aggression. So just slap it against the bowl. For some reason if I don't do this, you just don't get the right texture. Okay, so that's looking good. Now we want to roll our meatballs. Now to make this whole process a little less sticky, you'll find if you wet your hands with some water first, that'll make things go a little easier. Just want little walnut sized pieces here. Are you ready? How's that? Too Very big. nice. Very good. I know, I knew you'd get angry if I didn't do it like that. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so now we want to get these meatballs cooked and I just want a little bit of oil in my pan. Now I want to get this pan really hot because I want a really nice, beautiful char on the outside of these meatballs. Sort of mimic the kind of smoky chariness you'd get from doing these on an outdoor grill. Reminds me of Vietnamese street food. Once we've got some good colour on this first side, flip those over. And I think it's going to help here with this beautiful colour is that we've got that little bit of sugar in our meatball mix. Mm. I can already smell the lemongrass and the fish sauce. So beautiful. The other thing you want to do is 
to swirl your pan around, get that beautiful colour all over. Now these look amazing, they certainly smell ridiculously amazing. I'm just going to let them sit here in the pan while I get the rest of my banh mi roll organised. I like to set myself up with a little station here. I've got my beautiful baguette and of course in the very traditional realm of banh mi sandwiches that you get in Vietnam I have my selection of meats. So I've got some pate and when I was in Hanoi you always judged your banh mi by the quality of the pate. Now in Vietnam you get all sorts of different kind of slices of sausage or luncheon meats. This one is spiked with chili. Yum. What could be better than that? Okay, so let's get our baguette, a nice chunk here. I like to start with my pork pate. So this is an optional. If you don't particularly like pate, you can't get a hold of it, you can totally leave it out. But if you've had a banh mi in Hanoi, you probably would find this a non-negotiable. Now, a couple of pieces of that spicy pork luncheon. And then my chari meatballs. Now take a look at our pickled carrot and chili here. That carrot has softened right up. It'll be really tangy, crunchy. Now QP mayonnaise is my preferred mayonnaise for this one. I love the Japanese style of like tangy, sweet mayonnaise and then a little bit of optional spicy here. I'm going to add some coconut sriracha to this one too. And then some beautiful fresh sprigs of coriander. It's something I always get when I'm eating this in Hanoi. And there you go guys, that is one spicy meatball banh mi sandwich. Oh, that looks so amazing. I guess the proof is always in the eating. Now, this isn't a particularly delicate kind of sandwich to eat, so you'll have to forgive me. Mm. Mm. Wow. All those different flavors, the pickled carrot, the pork, the spicy chili, and the pop of the fresh coriander. Wow, it really is like a huge explosion in your mouth and everything just comes together beautifully. Mm. This is definitely worth getting your face messy for. <laughs>